Okay, let's see how this goes. <laughs> hey y'all, welcome back to my channel. My name is Amy. Today I'm gonna be talking about thrillers, all about thrillers, because it is Friday the 13th. And I am just filming this today. <laughs> So I thought I'd pick out like 13 of some of my favorite thrillers that I've read just throughout the years, not necessarily this year, um, which most of them, probably most of them have been from this year, but I do have a few that I've read or listened to, you know, back in the day, traveling to work or, or whatnot. I have a list of some favorites. Um, so I thought it would be fun to do 13 thrillers for Friday the 13th. So here we go. And excuse my appearance, my apologies. I am actually filming this on Friday the 13th. So as soon as I got back from Jazzercise, I just figured I'd pop on and film this so I could get it edited and put up and then get to work. Um, so I apologize for my appearance today, but hey, we're just keeping it real. And I really need to do my nails. Okay, in no particular order, I just have a stack right here with me. I also have a little post-it notes of the ones that um, I don't have an actual book for. I don't know, maybe we'll alternate between a book and a picture over here, something like that. First up is Behind Closed Doors by B.A. Paris. This is actually my favorite B.A. Paris. I listened to this book it's been a couple years, so bear with me on remembering really what it's about, and I'm sorry about the lighting. It keeps going in and out. Maybe if I put this down, it comes, yeah. I'm in, like, I'm in my living room today, um, because I wanted to film by my, by my Christmas tree, and, um, this, I have French doors here, so this is my only lighting, but it's a gloomy day today, so maybe I could put that lamp on. That might help. Hey, eh. <laughs> But anyway... Behind Closed Doors by B.A. Paris. This is basically one of those scenarios where whatever is happening on, what you see on the outside is not necessarily what is really happening on the inside. So you have like the husband and wife, I actually don't remember their names, but they seem like they had the perfect marriage, the perfect life. Behind Closed Doors, there was a different story and that story was just crazy. I don't want to give too much away because it, it involves most most of the book. We'll just say that the, the husband might not be who he seems to be, I guess. I, can, I guess I can say that. But anyway, uh, it was it's one of my favorite thrillers that I've listened to years ago. I don't remember who narrated it, um, but I remember just enjoying the narration and just the book. Uh, in general. So next we'll talk about Then She Was Gone by Lisa Jewell and I'll put a picture of that here. I actually do have this book but I loaned it to my friend Debbie to read and I've been after her to read this book. Debbie, read this book. <laughs> it's really good. I promise. So we actually follow um, a mother in, in this book. Again, it's been a while since I read slash listen to this book. I think I did listen to it. Her daughter went missing and we get um, the point of view from the mother as well as the daughter. So it's, it's really cool. So it goes back and forth from timelines. Uh, so it's really cool to get the perspective from the daughter and what's happening to her um, as well as like what the mother's going through and things the things that are going through her mind and there's such a twist to this story like she she ends up meeting this guy and because the mother is divorced and so she ends up meeting this guy and they date and he has a daughter that resembles her daughter so much so that she just it just really bothers her and it just keeps on like on in the back of her mind like what what is up with this child why does she look so much like my daughter it is such such a twist y'all i just i just i really enjoyed it i i know there's there's up and downs about this book some people love it some people don't i i loved it i love a good timeline kind of story I've learned throughout this year of booktube that I love story within a story and timeline stories for sure. I love like going back and getting the perspective from one person and then 
learning from this part from another person in the future I don't know what it is but I love it but this book was really good and it's definitely in my top 13 next up is you by Caroline Kep Kepnis yes <laughs> um, I I mean who doesn't love Joe who doesn't love Joe? I loved this book so much. I even loved the series. And I believe the part two, uh, which is Hidden Bodies, which I did read that book. I didn't think it was as good as you, but it was it was still good. It was, you know, still good Joe stalking. Um, but wasn't it just it just didn't shouldn't touch me like this one did. And what I loved about you is that I fell in love with Joe, who is the, the stalker and the person doing these bad things. <laughs> but you love him so much. You, it, I, I, I've never, I've never had that. Well, no, no, I take that back. I do have one other book that I'll be talking about that kind of, I'm in the same situation because um, I loved the actual person, the bad person of the book, the killer or whatever. Um, but I loved, I love Joe character, Joe's character. So he, Joe works at a bookstore in New York. He didn't have the best upbringing. One day a beautiful young woman walks into his bookstore, Beck, and he's immediately obsessed with her. He figures out a way to get into her, her life, her, her text messages, her social medias, her emails. And it's just, he's, he's such a clever genius. He's such a clever stalker. Uh, sometimes not so much though. Sometimes he does get, get himself into a pickle, but I loved following him around. The book is in from his point of view. So I, I loved that. I loved, like I said, following him around, seeing what he was getting himself into, how he was going to get out of these situations. I loved it. I love the series and I cannot wait to see what they do with um, the second series, I guess, or the next, the season two of the show. Like I said, I didn't really care for, I mean, I liked hid Hidden Bodies, um, good enough, but it just, it just didn't touch you. Um, but anyway, I'm, I'm looking forward to the series. Next we have Silent Child. I'll put that right here. This is written by Sarah Denzel. This was so good y'all i listened to this years ago um, but i still re remember it very vividly in my mind so we have um a mother that l loses her child early early on um he's like a young boy and he goes missing and she spends years trying to figure out what happened to him if i'm remembering correctly um she finally just kind of gives in and tries to move on with her life so she you know she meets someone um and during the majority of the this book she's pregnant for this person's child i don't know if they're married or or what the relationship i don't really remember that uh, i just remember like the just the plot of the book and then one day he he appears i think it's like 10 years later yes 10 years later i had to go back and read my review because i wanted to make sure i was telling you all right 10 years later and she actually lost him during a flood like it's coming back to me now um just reading my review on goodreads i have reviews for all these books on goodreads except for um behind closed doors um because i read that or listened to that before um i was really into goodreads but anyway yes yeah, she loses her child in a flood and uh, 10 years later, he, he appears. He's like walking along the side of the road. Someone, a couple, older couple finds him and brings him, of course, to the police station where they figure out, like, he's silent, though. He is not talking about anything. He's, like, he's traumatized so much from whatever he's been through that he's just not speaking about it. Um, so they, they figure out that, he belongs to, I think her name, her name is Emma. She's eight months, eight months pregnant and she has so many questions for him and he, he is not, he is not responding. She's doing all she can. Just the majority of the book is that trying to figure out where he's been, what he's been through, her trying to get him to talk. But I know that doesn't sound like it's really that interesting, but trust me, it it really is because you're you're speculating this whole time, like what could have happened to him? Was it someone in her current life 
that has done this to him or you know like does does she know this person or is it someone else that these you know the police need to go out and find this person you know it's just it was just really good i promise you and the ending oh my goodness was just i i I didn't see the ending coming. Yeah, I have it written in my review. It says, um, every minute of this book had me tense and guessing, but nothing prepared me for such a twisted end of this story. I, it was very twisted, y'all. Highly, highly recommend. The narration was really good as well, too. Next up, let's talk about Bird Box. Such a good apocalyptic thriller. So, I mean, this book had me just on the edge of my seat. I, I didn't know what what was going to happen. Just just the thought of a being being out there that you cannot see can it just I don't know, it does something to me like it it just it just makes the hairs on my arm stand up. Like that would if that was really the case, like I would be so scared of everything. Even watching the show on Netflix. I know a lot of people say they didn't care for the the show the movie on netflix but i really liked it um i'm a huge fan of sandra bullock i think she did a great job um the the movie and the book do differ though there are some differences in between the two but the storyline and the plot and where they're going are basically the same so she's basically trying to get to a safer place so fast forward to um, where she's alone in this house with two of her children and she has to keep them safe as well as herself from the outside world. Uh, anyone who comes across these beings that looks at them, they go mad. Whether they kill themselves or try to kill other people, um, it's, it's just insane. And just the thought of that is just crazy. I know the movie had me my heart pounding. <laughs> the book just kind of just made my hair stand up because you know I'm. I think a visual is so much more intense than like something in your own mind because you don't really you don't really know what what you're trying to imagine. I guess I don't know. But watching the movie and watching all this movie this book come to life, I would like my heart was just pounding. But her name's Mallory by the way. So she, Mallory takes her two, two children um, out on this river in a boat to get to this safer place. She's blindfolded. The children are blindfolded throughout this entire time trying to navigate through the river to get to this place. I mean, what? Insane. She comes across many challenges in the river that just heartbeat faster make sure heartbeat faster but uh anyway i i enjoyed this so much i enjoyed the movie as well let's talk about the woman in the window this was my absolute favorite mystery thriller up until another book we'll talk about in a little bit but i know there's some controversy around this book and the author or whatever but i still stand behind my review and my rating for this book i absolutely just love the story i don't care who wrote it how they wrote it where they got their information the story was phenomenal to me i loved it so much i loved anna our main character so much she was such a hoot i giggled through throughout this book so much she has what's called agoraphobia which is a phobia of leaving your house basically leaving your surrounding area and going out into the world. Um, she was not always like this. She used to be a thriving psychologist uh, for children. She had a family of her own, a husband and I believe a daughter. Um, and throughout this book, like she's, she talks to them on, on the phone, the, like a lot. So the entire book, you know, I'm thinking, okay, well then I guess like the, the, the husband took the child away. So the mother could like, get through whatever it is that she's going through something happened and the whole time you're like what happened and why aren't the the husband and the child there you know did they split did something happen to make the anna and her husband split and the child is just with the father until anna gets better i don't know it was such it was such a crazy crazy story so anna loves to just 
watch like out her window the woman in the window she also loves old movies she loves her wine um she's tipsy pretty much all the time and just she's just hilarious it's um, but anyway, one day she's looking out her window and she sees something that that maybe she shouldn't have seen. And it just boggles her mind the entire time. And she wants to figure out what is really going on across the street, in the house across the street. And she she needs help. So she's doing her best to try to get to that point. But like I said, she has agoraphobia, so she can't... It, takes a lot for her to walk out of her house so when she does try to walk out of her house it's just it's just hilarious and you're sitting there rooting for her like i i know i was i was like come on anna you can do it it was it was so good um she also befriends the little boy from across the street or a young man i guess i think he's like a teenager 14 15 something like that maybe even 16 i don't even, i don't remember but um she befriends him you know tries to get information from him like what's going on you know in, in your house, what did I see? You know, did I, did I see correctly or was it just my crazy mind? But this was such, such a good book. And the entire time you're just trying to figure out, figure out what happened to Anna, but yet there's also another storyline going on that you're totally invested in. About what's, what happened to this family across the street? What did she see? And um, I just, I just loved it. I loved every minute of it. it the ending had so many crazy twists and turns in it. When when you find out what happened to Anna, you're like, wow. I, I wow. I, it, like I said, this was my favorite mystery thriller up until, you'll find out in a minute. <laughs> Next up, I have Sweet Pea by CJ Scoose. I'll put a picture of it here. I don't actually have the copy of this book. I did listen to this on audio this past year. Loved this book. This is the one I was talking about where you follow your you're following along with the killer. So Rhiannon is our killer. So this is all from her point of view and every chapter begins with a kill list. Like everyone she wants to kill from the guy or woman that pulls out in front of her to the guy at the grocery store that's not bagging her groceries correctly. Uh, she's out to kill everybody. She has sort of a Dexter sort of complex like that's how I got it but yet not it's hard to explain um but i got i got sort of like a dexter feel from her and um but she's she's just she's hilarious herself she's and and the way she goes about these murders is and gets away with it is is crazy she's just your average girl i mean she has an average job she has a boyfriend who could possibly be cheating on her so she wants to kill him and whoever he's sleeping with <laughs> she's a very funny and quirky character i i loved her so much i love this book i loved her story um this is a series um in bloom is the next book which i haven't got to yet i do have it but i haven't got to it yet but the sweet pea does kind of leave you with a nice little cliffhanger so i can't wait to find out how she gets out of this situation that she's currently in um, it was definitely a fun read. I highly, highly recommend it. The narration of this book, I did listen to this book. I don't know if I mentioned that, but the narration was phenomenal. So highly, highly recommend the audio for this book. Next, I have two books from the same author I want to talk about. One I recently just read. I just finished reading it this month in December. Uh, so you will hear about it again. Um, but the first one we're going to talk about is Dark Matter by Blake Crouch. This just totally threw threw me off. Uh, I had mentioned before that I'm not a sci-fi reader, um, but in my mind, sci-fi has to do with like space and aliens and thing like things like that. And I'm not I'm not into that. I like science fiction as far as like time traveling and weird things that are happening in people's minds and things that I don't know. I don't know how to explain myself, but. I loved Dark Matter so, so much. So this book kind of has to deal with you, you are living your life, living your best life. You had a moment in that life where you had to make a decision and you chose this particular path and you've been living in on that path and everything's been fine, no regrets. But there's a little bit of a nagging feeling in the back of your mind that says, what if I would have took that other road? What if I took that other path? Where will I be? Where would I be at now? 
well that's what this book has to deal with so this guy jason he is a very very smart scientist and he has built some sort of box to where you can go back to that particular time and make the other decision am i am i saying that right and see where your life's at through that perspective it's it kind of just blow it still blows my mind to to try to think about it but you're basically in two places like you're you're you in this timeline that you chose and then there's you from the timeline that you didn't choose who that person that jason is curious to see what this jason is up to and if if his life is better than that jason are you confused yet because i think i just confused myself <laughs> but it's it was so good mind-blowing experience uh, i also i listened to this book as well narration was great i loved it and going with that i also just finished recursion and it's sort of on the same path but it has more to do with time travel than like having because like in in dark matter there were multiple jasons at multiple times because he kept like cre recreating himself in a another timeline and all those jasons were after the the main jason from the beginning of the book <sighs> just read it it's crazy it's crazy uh recursion has to do with more like sort of time travel i guess but we have helena who is a neuroscientist and she develops like this chair her goal is for people with alzheimer's to um be able to remember the like because her mother has alzheimer's and she's dealing with her mother just dwindling away and not remembering her or anything and she is just she just she wants to make that better for for people with alzheimer's she desperately wants to help her mother um, desperately wants to help other people so she invents this chair to i don't know do something with the brain with the memories to help people this chair gets into the wrong hands basically and you can only imagine how it goes from there so you can you can take this basically you can take this chair and okay for example um in the book we have what's his name barry Barry lost his daughter years ago in a hit and run and he blames himself. So he's given this opportunity to go back to that time and correct it. So basically this, this chair is being used to go back and correct things. But in the meantime, if you go back and correct these things, the future changes. So, I mean, you can only like just go from there. You can only imagine what could happen if, say, you like go back into like the World War days where I don't know, maybe like you kill Hitler or something, and the events that were supposed to take place don't take place, and it could just change the world completely. You might not even be in that world. It's it's insane, insane, mind blowing. I loved it so much. I I have to read more by Blake Crouch because. I, I'm just loving his writing. Next up, we have Verity. I'll put a picture of it right here. I um, I read this actually on my Nook, but this is by Colleen Hoover, and I've never read anything by Colleen Hoover, and I have not read anything since I've re read Verity, but I really liked it. I know a lot of people did not like it, but I I thought it was a really good book. It was very well written. It was a story within a story, which I love. It like it like has you like right from the beginning. Uh, it, the beginning just kind of catches you, and you go from there. There's also a little bit of a romance in this book. So not only is it like a mystery thriller, um, but there's also a little bit of a romance. So we have Lowen, who is our main character, and she is a a writer, but she is not doing so well as far as um, her writing goes, book sales or whatever. Um, and she, one day she is approached by the husband of a very well-known author. This, his wife is, is ill and she cannot finish 
the series that she has started and I believe it's like the last book my phone thinks I'm talking to it <laughs> again so he he's read her books before and he's enjoyed her books so he chooses her to finish his wife's stories so she basically goes to live with them in their home where, where she can have access to these books that this this current this author has written so she can find out what path this these books are on who these characters are get to know these characters how she wants to proceed with with finishing um this series because it's a very popular series but while she's there like so many it's so creepy so creepy while she's there she sees different things like she thinks she's seeing things uh, as far as because the the wife is there too the wife is there in bed and you know in like in like this hospital bed in a room where the husband's taking care of her and Lowen thinks that she sees her watching her um and it's just it's so creepy it's i was creeped out by it um but so there's that story but then also she finds the while she's like trying to figure out what how to finish this author's books she finds her her biography like this author was in the middle of writing her biography and so she starts to read it to get to know this woman better and the stuff that she finds out is crazy but is it all real was this biography planted there is she whatever she's reading is that for real uh, it kind of gets to that point towards the end of the book where she doesn't know what's real and what's not it's it's so good y'all i was still like confused at the end not confused but i still like i didn't know what was real towards the end like i i, I still don't like know what <laughs> the, the ending still kept me guessing like is is this for real it's like is it really ending this way or uh, what's happening but <laughs> but it was really good i enjoyed every minute of it let's talk about lock every door by riley sager I read this this year, right when it came out. This is one of the book of the month picks. This was also such a crazy ride. So this takes place at a like a sort of like creepy hotel called the Bartholomew. Am I, am I thinking that? Am I saying that correctly? Yes, the Bartholomew in Manhattan. We have our main character Jules, who is just a little, you know, down on her luck right now. Uh, she really needs like the extra money. I uh, think her and her boyfriend broke up, so she's has to find a, a place of her own she gets this opportunity to go stay at this hotel for for money which is sort of just like crazy already like who does that you know like it, it, does that really exist like they basically just want these rooms occupied and so they pay these people to occupy these rooms I, weird but anyway there's all sorts of rules when she moves in and she can't have any guests. Um, she can't like say too much about what's going on, uh, where she's living or whatnot. But this book also goes back and forth. So it kind of starts out when she's like in, in, a, in a hospital bed, uh, something has just happened. I don't know whether she got, I think she got hit, maybe possibly hit by a car. So you start out there and then it kind of starts her story. Uh, so it goes back and forth from her being in this hospital bed to her telling the story of how she got to that point. All sorts of weird stuff start to happen. Uh, she befriends this girl that is also in an apartment and like the next day she goes missing. And it's just, it's just a, it's just cr a crazy mystery of what's happening in this hotel. Just when you think it's over, it's really not. Like another storyline just kicks off and it's it's crazy. It's a crazy ride. I, I really enjoyed it. I did listen to it as well um, and the narration was really good. Okay, next up, um, bear with me on this one. This one is The Dead Key by DM Pulley. I listened to this so long ago, it's a little fuzzy in my brain, but I do know that I really, really liked it. And it was creepy. It has to do with this deserted old bank, um, which right there is super creepy. And if I remember correctly, like some things took place in this this bank. Um, so the bank holds some secrets um, that our main character 
is going to discover. I don't remember a lot from this book and and my my review on Goodreads is very vague but I this book does flip-flop timelines so we have we're following two people we're following Beatrice in 1978 and then we're following Iris in 1998 which again timelines I love I love timeline stories I can read you the synopsis it's 1998 and for years the old first bank of Cleveland has sat abandoned perfectly preserved its secrets only speculated on by the outside world 20 years before amid strange staff disappearances and allegations of fraud panicked investors sold Cleveland's largest bank in the middle of the night locking out customers and employees and throttling a looming federal investigation in the confusion that followed the keys to the vault safe deposit boxes were lost in the years since Cleveland's wealthy businessmen kept the truth buried in the abandoned high-rise the ransacked offices and forgotten safe deposit boxes remain locked in time until young engineer she was an engineer okay Iris Latch stumbles upon them during a renovation survey which begins as a welcome break from her cubicle becomes an obsession as Iris unravels the bank's sordid past. With each haunting revelation, Iris follows the looming shadow of the past deeper into the vault and soon realizes that the key to the mystery comes at an astonishing price. Okay, now I kind of remember a little bit about it, but it was very very good I do remember not really caring for Iris who is our main character but the story within itself and getting the perspective of the two timelines I really really enjoyed it the narration was very good too I do remember that <laughs> and last but not least my favorite thriller mystery thriller of 2019 is the turn of the key by Ruth Ware I loved this book so much y'all it's a story within a story our main character is telling her story of what happened in this house our main character Rowan is um, a nanny and she is hired by um, this very wealthy family I guess to be their nanny they have uh, I think like three children three or four children I don't remember how many children they have um, one's old enough to wear that she's not really there at all a lot but it takes place in this old home but the home has been refurbished or renovated by this this young couple they are both I think like architectures or something like that so they sort of rebuilt this old home to make it a more um, modern smart home it's very the home itself is very creepy it kind of it talks to you and you know things like that you talk to it I don't I don't know I I thought it was very creepy but I Rowan starts to experience um, some things going on in the house and starts to sort of wonder what happened to all the other nannies that they couldn't apparently they couldn't keep it's very creepy, very interesting. I, I love the story within the story. So in the beginning, Ro Rowan is in prison for murder, um, for murdering one of the children. So that's kind of how it starts off. So she's writing a letter to this lawyer that she wants to represent her in, in, in her case. She's saying that she did not murder this child. Uh, she wants him to help her. And the only way he can help her is if he knows the truth of what happened in that house so she begins to tell her story through letters to this attorney the ending of this was so twisted my heart just really went out to Rowan she wasn't the most perfect person and there is a little twist on her story as well but what she must have went through and sacrificed I can't say anymore um, it the ending just really it was really good I was very very like just like I didn't I didn't know how to feel at the ending um, but such a good read like top number one of 2019 all right y'all that is it that's my 13 thrillers for this Friday the 13th in December so I hope you all enjoyed this I hope you're having a wonderful holiday season so far uh, a happy happy friday the 13th or should i say merry friday the 13th 
Of course, I'll have all these books listed down below uh, if you want to go check them out for yourself, as well as my social medias. As always, come follow me. Let's be friends. Have a great, great weekend, y'all. I will see y'all in my next video. Bye.